All right, so in this video, I want to cover Waves Clarity VX and VX Pro and help you better decide which one would be best for you. This is a really powerful plugin for removing background noise or ambience from your recordings, and you can even remove music from songs leaving only the vocals if that's what you're looking to do. But the real question here is how well does it do all of this? Now, right up front, I will say ear training is definitely going to play a key role in this video. If you have ear training, you will likely hear more subtle details that other people won't, but for the most part, as long as you're wearing high-quality headphones, you will be able to hear the differences even if you can't pick up on the more subtle details here. What really helps is having someone describe what you're listening for, so I'm going to do my best in this video to do that as we go along as well as breaking down what all of the different features do and how I work through them for each scenario. Who is this video for? So this video is mainly for content creators. So if you're a YouTuber, a podcaster, a live streamer, you shoot weddings or any other type of content like this, and if you do audio for film or TV, these plugins could definitely be a lifesaver. But if you're a voice actor, I would say this video is not for you. I know, I know. If, if you want to know why that is, just stick with me until the end of the video and I will explain. And by the way, side note, I'm waiting for my Canon EOS R5C to ship, so until then, I just decided to keep all of this audio with no video of me. So, here we go. All right, so I have a few different audio examples here, and as we move along, they'll get a little more aggressive or a little more challenging. And one thing I tried to do throughout these audio examples is talk as much as I possibly could throughout and not leave a lot of pauses or a lot of spaces uh, because I really wanted to push clarity and have it really try to separate the voice from the noise. And uh, so that's something I did here throughout my examples. And like I said, they're going to get more aggressive and more challenging as they go. So to start here, I have a recording I did on the Shure SM7B. And as everybody knows, if you record on a Shure SM7B and you don't have a decent interface or you don't have a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, then you will likely have to crank the gain super high on your interface to get decent levels out of this microphone, which will inherently introduce a lot of self noise or at least some self noise into your audio. But I actually increased this or I exaggerated this more so by putting a limiter on the front end of my processing chain uh, within my UAD Apollo twin because you can do that and I kind of cranked the limiter pretty high so that it would introduce a lot more self noise than usual because I, like I said I really wanted to push these plugins and see what they're capable of so this this is the first example and let's just play through this example just a little bit of it at least for you to be able to hear what we're working with so here we go all right so as everybody knows, the Shure SM7B is a gain-hungry microphone, and if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, Okay, so as you can hear, there's definitely a lot of white noise or self noise or hiss in the background. If you just want to play the, the, um, the noise, this is what it sounds like. I mean, you can tell that that was like up here. It's very, very loud and distracting. So, okay, all right, let's 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 start with Clarity, um, just the VX, just the standard version. Okay, so I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to open it up. And let's start with it, you know, just on its default settings, which is this. This is its default settings before we talk about anything. And let's just move this up and let's see how it does on its default settings. So here we go. All right. So as everybody knows, the Shure SM7B is a gain-hungry microphone, and if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to... I mean, look at that. For the most part, right now, I'm not even at like, what, 10, 11 o'clock or whatever. It, it, that is pretty much it. It's pretty much gotten rid of most of the hiss, if not all of it. It might slightly be there if you're wearing really high-quality headphones like I am. But for the most part, that distracting background hiss is gone. Let's do a little before and after. I'm going to turn this off and bypass it and then turn it back on and you're going to hear the differences. So here we go. Crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided to enhance that as much as I could by putting a limiter on the front end of my processing. Okay, now let's just do it on the sound, the noise by itself. All right, so I've got it looped and let's just do that. So 
So the hiss is still there, obviously, you can tell. But the good news is to the human ear, it is significantly reduced. I mean, a lot of people would probably be like, I can't even tell it's there. Like, I can't even hear it. Especially if you're not listening on high quality speakers or headphones, you wouldn't even be able to tell it's there. But let's go ahead and push this thing all the way, all the way to its uh, max and just see what happens. So here we go. A decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided to enhance that as much as I could by putting a limiter on the front end of my processing within my Universal Audio Apollo Twin. So I've got a limiter on the front and I've got it cranked with awesome. I mean, this is doing a phenomenal job right out the gate. I mean, honest default settings. This is the uh, standard version. Now, I will say if I'm being super, super picky because I'm an audio engineer and that's what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to be super critical listeners. We're supposed to be very picky and get the audio sounding as best as it can. Now, if I'm being super picky, I would say that the voice is starting to lose just the tiniest bit of clarity. Okay, just a tiny, tiny bit. And the reason for that would be this. This sound, the noise in the background right here. Well, oh, pff, it's doing a great job. I need to cut that off. All right, this sound. That is a really high pitch frequency or frequencies. Those are high pitch frequencies. So they're up in the high end. So that would also fight with the upper high end of my voice. Okay, just a little bit. And so what happens with a denoiser is it's trying to get rid of that noise without negatively affecting your voice. The problem here is when a noise is competing with frequencies in your voice, which is going to be most of the time, the denoiser does its best to try not to pull those frequencies out of your voice. But I mean, it, as you get more aggressive, it's going to do that. So if I'm getting super ridiculously picky here, I'm noticing that with this all the way up, my voice is losing just a touch of clarity and it's getting a little darker sounding um, and it maybe not not muddy at all, but like it's just not as clear as it was before. So you may not be able to hear that, like I said, if you don't have really high end headphones or, or really critical ear training, but let's just do the before and after really fast interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise and for this the good news is though i mean 99 percent of people out there would never even notice that but anyway this did a great 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 job so before we jump into pro i just want to talk about one last thing you've got broad one and you've got broad two so what do those things do well let's just go find out really fast Okay, so on Wave's website, it says Broad One is better at preserving both the main and secondary voices when more than one voice is present in the recording, and Broad Two is recommended for severe noises, and it also um, it is also better at separating the main voice from secondary background voices when more than one voice is present in a recording. So it sounds like that Broad One is great for preserving multiple voices. If you're doing a podcast, you've got multiple speakers, and you want to keep their voices, you want to retain their voices, get rid of a noise, boom. Broad Two it sounds like let's just say you're in I don't know a crowd of people and you're trying to pick up your voice and there's people talking all around you it would hopefully do a good job it seems like at getting rid of those background noises but retaining yours which I feel like that would be quite challenging but for my scenario it doesn't quite match up for that but what I highly recommend you do is just test them out because what I've found throughout testing this plugin and what I'm sure so many other people have found is even though Broad 1 and Broad 2 have their own specific definition of what they do, you may find for your specific recording that Broad 2 actually does a better job for whatever scenario you're in. You never know. You never know what it's going to do. So just try it and see what happens. See what your results are. And then Another thing is you also don't just, this is what I meant to say before, you don't just want to play interface or a game, just play the audio for two seconds and be like, nah, this plugin's not doing a good job. Because the thing about these plugins is they're learning over time. So the longer you play the audio, the more the plugin is learning what your voice is and what the noise is. So play the play the audio clip for like 10 seconds and let it really learn what you're trying to get it to do. And then you're going to have better results that way. Don't just play it for two seconds and be like, ah, it didn't do a good job. So anyway, let's uh, compare broad one and broad two. So let's do this really fast. Let's just keep it all the way up. 
and let's go between them. Have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided to enhance that as much as I could by putting a limiter on the front end of my processing within my Universal Audio Apollo Twin. So I've got a limiter on the front and I've got it cranked, which... Okay, uh, to my ears, what I'm hearing is Broad 2 uh, has more clarity in the audio, but here's why. When I go to Broad 2, that white noise is still in the audio. It's still more present. Whereas Broad 1, it got rid of it totally. And Broad 2, it's still it's still in the audio a bit. And because of this, it actually makes it sound like there's more clarity in my voice because there is, because it's not taking that noise out completely. So, okay, that's interesting. Broad 2 may not be the greatest choice for this example, unless you do want to retain some of that higher pitch frequencies in your voice, but also help mitigate the sound in the background, but not completely get rid of it like we did with Broad 1. But okay, that is the standard version. So now let's switch. Let's switch over to the Pro version. And what you're going to notice right away is it seems like there's a lot more going on. But right now in this very moment, it, uh, in its default settings, you can use this like the standard version just by taking this fader and moving it all the way over um, to, you know, basically doing what we did before. So if I play this now. All right. So as everybody knows, the Shure SM7B is a gain-hungry microphone. And if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lift, Okay, so it's doing an amazing job just like standard did. But the other thing that this version or the pro version gives you is for you to be able to get rid of the voice and only bring the ambience in. Okay, so this could be helpful for people that are doing audio for TV and film and they're trying to do something like, I don't know, ADR and they're trying to match up someone's dialogue on set that day but they're in a studio doing ADR and they're like, ah, I need this to sound like we were on set. Well, they could take the ambience uh, or a recording that was on set that day and they could take this dial and move it all the way over to ambience and try to get the ambience from that room to match up with the ADR audio. Now, I've already tried this before and it doesn't do an amazing job on this recording. I mean, listen, it tries to bring the ambience back in, but it struggles because the voice is causing it to duck and do some crazy stuff. So anyway, here's, here's what it sounds like. So it's trying, it's trying really hard, but it's not doing an amazing job at this moment. But now let's open Pro up. Let's actually use Pro the way it was made to be used. And all you gotta do is hit advanced controls, bam. And then now you've got all of these different functions and things that you can do. So the first thing that you probably noticed, other than just the extra buttons and everything, is, oh, this window, whoa, what is this? So, you know, try to explain it the easiest way possible. You can look at this kind of like an equalizer in a way, um, just the interface itself. You're looking at frequencies over time, okay? So you're looking at the low frequencies, the middle frequencies, and then the high frequencies up here, right? So it goes left to right, low, mid to high. And this is your voice and the noise, okay? So you're just trying to figure out, okay, you know, let's say you have a really high pitched noise. Maybe you only need to do stuff over here. That's what this allows you to do. Maybe you don't need to turn this up and make it go across the whole spectrum. Maybe if the noise is just a high pitched noise, you really only needed to do stuff up here. You don't need it to do anything to down here, which could potentially negatively affect the voice. So now that I've got Pro pulled up and I've got the advanced controls turned on, let's walk through this, how I would do this using Pro. So let's let's go ahead. And let's just start right here. And uh, let's go ahead and put this on default when you open it. It's like this, but turn the advanced controls on. And let's just go through. It's a gain-hungry microphone. And if you don't have a... Okay, well, immediately I'm going to go, all right, well, this is a higher pitch noise, right? So it's going to live more so up in this area. It won't really live down in this area. So I probably don't need to do anything down here, or at least not a lot. And so now what I would do is this solo button will allow you to just listen to this section, this band. Now we can take this band and we can move it back and forth, deciding how much we wanna include or eliminate from that band, okay? But right now, I'll just leave it here. I'm gonna solo this and listen, you're only gonna be able to hear what's up in this higher pitch range. Awesome, okay, now we're not doing anything, but let's just go ahead, let's turn this all the way up, all right? Let's just get rid of all of, all of the noise that we possibly can. So this right here 
is what tells you how aggressive you're going to be at trying to get rid of that noise. Okay, so if I have this all the way up, it is 100% getting rid of as much of that noise as it possibly can in that band. If I have this all the way down, whoops, if I have this all the way down, it's doing nothing, nothing at all. It's not getting rid of that noise whatsoever. Even if I have this all the way up and I have a band all the way down, that means in this section, it's not getting rid of any of the noise at all. So what I like to do when I have pro pulled up is, especially in this scenario, when it's just a high pitch noise, I'm just going to go and solo this band. And I'm going to pull this up until I hear that high pitch noise go away in the background and I just hear my voice. So let's, let's try that, okay? Here we go. Okay, awesome. All right, so right there, I'm noticing, okay, I, I, I was kind of hearing the high-pitched noise go away, which means I don't have to yank this all the way up to the top and, and have it, you know, do something more aggressively, which could in turn possibly negatively affect the voice. I only have to go this far, which is really awesome. So, okay, now let's solo this section and see how much noise is in this section. SM7B is a gain-hungry microphone, and if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal. Which Okay, and so around this area is where I'm noticing that that sound's going away, which is awesome. Now, there's probably not a whole lot in here, definitely not in here, but let's just, let's just hear anyway. Let's just see what we can hear. There's maybe something in here, so let's do the same thing. And if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone. I mean, there's potentially something there, but it's, it's very, very subtle. So it's probably not that big of a deal. So now, now that we've done this, and I forgot to unsolo this one, so that probably would have helped. But now that we've done this, let's listen to the before and after of what we've done here. So I'm going to turn this off and let's listen to it. And then I'm just going to keep bypassing it and then engaging it. Microphone. And if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or... S I mean, that's doing a really awesome job. That's doing an amazing job. Now, one thing is this is all the way up, as you can see when really it probably doesn't need to be engaged at all. So what I can do is either turn this all the way down or I can just bypass it and not even use this because the thing about voices, human voices, is they don't go nearly as low as so many other things do in life, right? So really most everything below 60, well, I, I would say for the human voice, everything below 60 hertz, depending on the voice, but most voices, there's really nothing there. And if there is something there, it's garbage that we just don't need in the recording, especially in a full mix with music and sound effects, things like that. So you can get rid of 60 and below. And, you know, like I said, depending on the voice, sometimes you can get rid of way more than that. You can go up to 80, sometimes 100, because there's some people with higher pitch voices out there that just don't produce low end content. So I don't even need to worry about this right here unless the noise is, you know, down there and I want to get rid of it. But it's it's probably not. And just for the heck of it, let's solo it and see if it is. No, I mean, there's no, there's no noise down there. There's no noise in this area, okay? You can hear just the time. If you're wearing really high-quality headphones, you may have heard some really like, like my voice down there doing that. So anyway, I don't need to worry about this. So I'm just going to bypass it. I'm just going to bypass that, which it wasn't before. And then again, we'll do a before and after. Microphone, and if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get it. Awesome. And and you know what? I may not even need to have this all the way up. So let's see if I need to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided to enhance that as much as I could by putting a limiter on the front. End. I mean, again, that sounds like it's doing an amazing job. The rule of thumb is you don't want to overdo anything, and that's really good for all processing. You don't want to overdo anything. So if I don't need to turn this all the way up to 100, then I don't need to, and I'm not going to, because I don't want any negative effects happening to the voice or the audio in general. So that sounds great, having it there. So, okay, 
Now let's talk about a couple of these other things really quick just to give you a good idea of what all this does so that we can move on to the next examples. You've got reflections right here. And let's just go see what Wave says about that so you can get their exact definition, okay? So where is, here we go. Reflections right here. Um, reflections control uh, to restore the natural reflections of the voice after noise reduction. Okay, so you can think about this kind of like, um, this is probably not the greatest example, but you have compression and you have a dry and wet knob. And a lot of people like to kind of take that knob and go a little bit from the wet to the dry because they like to kind of have a half mix. Half of what the, the audio sounded like before compression and half of what it sounds like with compression because it helps it sound a little more natural and not over-processed or not like just odd. So this is kind of what Reflections does in a way. But the thing about it is you want to be careful with it because if you over do reflections, you're just going to bring the noise back into the audio. That's really what ends up happening. So I found through my examples that I barely want to turn reflections up. I barely want to. Because watch what happens. When I start to turn reflections up, you're going to start hearing that hiss come back into the audio. So check this out. If you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this, so you see how low I mean, I could still hear a little bit of hiss with it this low, but you see what I'm talking about? You don't want to go crazy with this thing. And like I said, every single audio example is going to be different, and that's why you want to play with these things. But in this scenario, you you barely want to crank this up if that's what you want to do. But I mean, I would just leave it all the way down. It sounds fine to me. And then another thing you have is over here, we also have Broad 1. We have Broad 1 HF, and then we have Broad 2. So let's see if we can find what they say about these. Here we go. All right. So Broad 1 is better preserving both the main and secondary voices. This is just the same as the other one. But Broad 1 HF is a modification of Broad 1, which is trained to better preserve the high frequencies. So the that's what the HF is, the high frequencies of the voice, okay? Broad 2, um, this is just the same as it was in the other version, Broad 2. But let's just try Broad 1 HF. Let's see what that does. Let's see if we get any differences here. So let's go ahead and play this. Gain and hungry microphone. And if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided to enhance that as much as I could by putting a limiter on the front end of my processing with. So that was a good example of what I was talking about when I said that this plugin is learning over time as it goes and you need to let it learn as you play. Because every time I went back to Broad 1 HF, I was hearing more of the white noise. And then as I let it play, it started to subside a little bit. Now, you still hear a tiny, tiny bit of that white noise. But the good news is Broad 1 HF is preserving more of the high frequency content in my voice, which, you know, that may sound better to you in whatever situation or whatever mix you're working with. So I like it. I like Broad 1 HF. Let's just keep this in my Universal Audio Apollo Twin. So I've got a limiter on the... And you may even want to turn this even further with Broad 1 HF to really get that noise out. So let's try that. Front, and I've got it cranked, which is adding a lot more self noise than there would usually be in the audio because I want to test. I think that sounds great. Let's go before and after now with it cranked all the way up. In hungry microphone, and if you don't have a decent interface or a gain booster like a cloud lifter or a fed head or something like that, you will have to crank the microphone to get a good signal, which will introduce a lot of hiss or self noise. And for this example, I've actually decided I can definitely tell where Broad 1 HF is preserving a lot more of the high end content in the voice. Now it is subtle, probably for most people out there, it's very subtle. Um, but I can definitely hear it, especially on my headphones. It's preserving it. So that might be something you want to do. And then finally, one thing, uh, another thing to note is this, the, um, the amount. Okay, so the cool thing about the amount here is this allows you to control the amount of all of these at once, but it remembers where you've set them. So like, watch, if I crank this all the way up, you're probably thinking, oh no, it just forgot everything. It just, you know, cranked it all the way up. And now when I turn this down, they're all going to be flat, but no, check that out. It remembered. It remembered where I had these set before, and it keeps them in line with the way I had set them before. So that's really cool. And then lastly, you've got this ambience gate. So 
If you know how a gate works, basically whenever someone stops talking, it clamps down on the audio so that the audio goes to absolute silence, right? I'm not a huge fan of gates. Um, I like for the environment that you're in to be as treated as possible so that there is no issues on the front end. You try to fix issues on the front end physically rather than trying to fix them with the band-aid on the back end, but sometimes you just can't avoid it. So the gate, it, that's, that's what it does. And then you can tell it where you want the gate to kick in by using these knobs down here and where you want it to, to stop and all that good stuff. Um, you know, I, I you could use this and let's just see what it does. Let's just see what it does if I go all the way up with the gate. It is a gain hungry microphone. And if you don't have a decent interface or a gain, you know what? Matter of fact, this isn't a great example for it because I talk most of the way through this, like I was saying in the beginning of this video, I'm talking as much as I can. But it would basically, whenever I'm not talking, the gate would clamp down and it would try to um, push the audio down to zero dB so that you don't hear anything. That's basically what the gate does. So now that you're familiarized with what the standard version does and what the pro version does, let's move on and get more aggressive with these audio examples. All right, so for this scenario, I went into my bathroom, I cut the bathroom fan on, and I started recording. Um, now, this is going to be particularly challenging for one reason, the signal-to-noise ratio. So, you know, you obviously want what you're recording to be louder than everything else, and what's going to be challenging here is the bathroom fan was incredibly loud compared to my voice. You want the source that you're recording to be a lot louder than everything else in the background, and in this case, it's going to be challenging. And then the other thing, the thing that does work in our favor here, though, is it is a very consistent sound. With uh, When you work with denoisers, the best thing that you can do, the best problem you can have anyway, is making sure that that the sound is very consistent. It's not changing frequencies over time. It's not changing tonality over time. It's not like a siren, you know, like an alarm or something that's going like that because then it's changing going up and down. This is a fan, so it's just consistent. Now, I'm not going to be consistent, but it's more like, you know, it's just kind of one tone over time. That is so much easier for denoisers to get rid of. But like I said, this is very loud. So let's see how this does. All right. So let me just give you an idea of what this sounds like. And you know what, I'll turn it up even a little bit just to make it easier to hear. So let's let's hear what this sounds like without this plugin doing anything, okay? So this is what it sounds like. Life is full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you. To and as you can hear, it's a bathroom, which is like the worst place you can record audio because there's so many hard surfaces in there for your voice to bounce off of and come back into the microphone. It is not treated whatsoever, so you hear a lot of hard surface reflections in there. But let's see how this does, okay? So let's try this. Failures and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. Can you hear that? Now, I'm going to tell you what to listen for if you can't hear it. This is exactly what I was talking about in a couple of previous examples. I can hear the sound jumping back into the audio as I speak. And this is less subtle than it was before because remember what I said, signal to noise ratio, the ambient noise in the background was really loud compared to my voice that I was trying to record. And because of this, I have this plugin cranked all the way up to try to get rid of that noise. But every time I speak, you can hear the noise coming back into my audio. So check this out. And support you in ways that matter the most to you. No person situation or circumstance can define who you are. Don't give up. If you can't hear that, likely it's because you're not listening on high quality headphones or speakers and you're just listening on your phone or something like that and you wouldn't probably be able to tell, but that's what's happening. So just for the heck of it, let's go to broad two. Let's see what happens. Appointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything you know what? I could be wrong, but to my ears, that actually sounds like it's doing a bit of a better job. Let's just flip between them. That life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that matter the most to you. No person, situation, or circumstance can define who you are. Yeah, see what I'm saying? This is what I was talking about before. Play with these different settings. Find what works best for this specific example, because in this example, Broad 2 does a better job. Broad 2 retains the clarity of my voice, but 
it's probably because it's not crushing this sound as much. And so it's not popping back into my voice as drastically as it is in Broad 1. So it's not as detectable to the human ear as you listen to it. So in this scenario, Broad 2 actually does a better job. So again, just for everyone watching, just so you can have a before and after, listen to this. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that matter the most to you. No person... Awesome. I mean, hey, Broad 2 did a better job in this scenario. All right, let's move on to Pro and let's see what we can do. Let's see how much better that we can make this sound. So I'm going to turn on Advanced Controls and let's just go through this and let's see what we can do. I'm going to keep it on Broad 1 to start... I'm going to go ahead just for the heck of it and I'm going to um I'm going to turn this all the way up. All the way up. And uh and let's just go through and single these out and see you know how much of the noise is in these different bands, okay? So I'm just going to go to the low and just see if there is any in this low appointments, failures and setbacks. It doesn't really sound like there's a whole lot going on down there. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and bypass that. And let's just move down the line. Let's do the same thing here. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways. So what I hope you noticed I did there is I took this away. And when I stopped talking, I heard the noise go away. But when I heard myself start talking again, I heard that sound coming back into my voice like we were talking about. It punches back in. So I had to raise this up even further to get that punch in, you know, the, the noise punching into my voice to stop. And that's what I just did. So, all right, let's move on to this one. Do the same thing. Okay, I can still hear it punching into my voice a little bit here and there, but I don't want to crush anything. I want to see if I can make this sound somewhat natural. I'll come back to this if I need to. But let's go ahead and move on here. Don't do that. Okay, let's see what we've done here. Let's see what we've done. Let's go in the corner and think about what we've done. Here we go. That backs. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself- Alright, I'm still hearing it popping in. Popping into my voice, so let's just raise these a little bit and see if we can stop that. ...with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that matter the most to you. No person, situation, or circumstance can define who you are. Don't give up, cave in, or stop believing that it's possible. Okay, it's still punching in, like I was saying, it's still punching in. So let's just, you know what? Let's try, because Broad 2 we found did a better job. Let's try Broad 1 HF, let's see what that does. Here we go. It's full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, Broad 1 doesn't do a bad job, but it sounds like Broad 1 HF and 2, they just do better for this specific scenario here. And that's what I was saying. You just got to find what works best for you and your scenario. And now, just for the heck of it, let's go all the way up. All the way up with everything. Okay. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and include this bottom end. Why not? And let's see what this does. Appointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There is nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself. Yeah, man. Broad 2. That's the one. That's the one that wins this round for this example. I mean, you know, you don't want to go crazy and crush your voice because I'm definitely hearing that warbly sound to the voice, you know. It's almost like an underwater, weird, pixelated, crazy sound. It's hard to describe what I'm hearing, but I'm definitely hearing that. But again, this is an extreme example where a fan is really loud and getting in the way of your source, which is your voice. So there's that example. Now let's move on to the last two examples. Um, and honestly, both of them are equally challenging in their own way. So let's just go ahead 
and let's do the loud music test. Let's do this one, okay? So I have some of my music playing in the background, something I made a while ago. That way um, I don't get in any kind of trouble. And I have it cranked up in my living room and I'm also speaking. So this is gonna be really challenging because this is, uh, this is both of the bads. This is the level of the music is going up and down throughout the whole thing where it gets loud and gets quiet and gets loud. But then the tonality and the frequencies of the music, I mean, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. So it's not just one constant noise, you know? So this is gonna be a really big challenge and let's see how this does, okay? So let's start with the standard. I'm James Younger and welcome to my channel. This channel is about all things audio. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound design, or dialogue editing, voiceover. And I'm also a voice actor, famously said by the great George. I can still hear the music punching in and out as I speak, but holy crap, that did an amazing job. That did, that did really, really well. Um, now... The music wasn't as loud as, let's say, our last example, which was the fan, but the music is still, you know, decently annoying and distracting, and it's in the background for sure. So, again, if you're a, a person that shoots weddings and, let's say, the DJ has his music going at a time that was really inconvenient for you, and it, maybe it was an important time where they're saying their vows or something and the DJ is just being a dingus or something, and he's just like, ah, I'm going to play some music now because it seems like the right time, well, this plugin will just work wonders for you. And you'll be like, oh, let me go ahead and get rid of that. I can't believe he's doing that. But um, okay, so now let's test broad two on this example. Let's see what happens. Not all things audio. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound design, or dialogue editing, voiceover. And I'm also a voice actor, famously said by the great George. Okay, well, in this example, Broad 2, again, brings more clarity into the voice. It sounds more clear. Problem is, you hear a lot of more, a lot more of the high-end content in, you know, things like the, the hi-hat or the snare or whatever in the music. And so I definitely hear more of the music when I turn it on Broad 2, but the voice does get more clear. So as an audio engineer or you know, whatever you're doing, you've got to make the decision, okay, what's the trade-off here? Uh, the voice is a little more darker or muffled sounding for Broad 1, but I hear less of the music. But in Broad 2, the voice is more clear. There's more clarity in the voice, but I hear just a little bit more of the high-end content of the music. You've got to decide which one is best for you. Which one do you think will work best for your overall mix or for whoever's listening? So, all right, now that we've done this, let's go to Pro. Let's see what we can do with Pro. Here we go. All right. Advanced controls, and as I've done before, let's just work our way through. Let's turn this, let's go all the way up with this, and let's just solo the bottom end down here, and let's just see what's in here. Okay, so I heard the bass of the music kind of subside there. Again, I could do a high-pass filter with EQ, but let's just, for the sake of argument, let's just do this here. Okay, awesome. Now let's move on to this band. Is about all things audio. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, draw tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of... Okay, I heard the music subside a lot, so let's move on to the next one. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, draw tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with... Okay, heard it subside quite a bit, so let's go to this one, do the same thing. And let's see what we've done. Let's do a before and after. This channel is about all things audio. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound design, or dialogue editing, voiceover. All right, I'm still hearing a lot of the higher end, um, you know, instruments like the snare and hi-hats. So let's just take this all the way up and let's see if that that helps. Might have to do some stuff here too. So let's just see what happens. Audio, audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound. 
All right. Going all the way up with that did help get rid of uh, the snare and the hi-hats um, a lot more, but I probably need to work on this band as well. So let's just do that with everything playing. Interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound design, or dialogue editing, voiceover, and I'm also a voice actor. And I can definitely still hear the music back there, uh, but it is helping quite a bit. So, okay, let's now... Try the different bands. Let's see what happens. All things audio. Audio tech, microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips, effects processing, home studio setup, podcasting, and a lot more. I'm an audio engineer with years of experience, whether it be music production, sound design, or dialogue editing, voiceover. And I'm also a voice actor. Famously said by the great George Lucas, audio is half the picture. And while this couldn't be more true, if you have a podcast, create music, or you're a content creator making YouTube videos or any other type of informational content, it's even more crucial that you have great sounding audio. So what are the techniques used throughout the industry? To yeah, this one's a pretty tough one for me. I think once you give it time, Broad 2 might be my choice here for the clarity in the voice. I definitely can still hear the higher pitch instruments, you know, hi-hat snares, things like that. Uh, but I, I like what Broad 2 is doing. I really do. And, um, you know, just for the heck of it for this one. Now, it's going to be really hard for this one. going to be really, really hard for this one because the music back there isn't that loud. So, again, signal-to-noise ratio. The ambience is nowhere near as loud as, let's say, that bathroom fan was. So this probably won't do a very good job whatsoever. But let's just see what happens. Microphones, interfaces, audio editing, DAW tips. Yeah, I mean, it's it's having quite a hard time getting that voice gone and everything. And again, we could do some stuff here, but let's just go on. Let's just move on to the next example, which this one is quite a difficult one. OK, so just like the one before, this one is dealing with really loud sounds that are inconsistent and also the fact that these sounds keep continuously moving across the frequency spectrum and the tonality keeps changing. I, I'm sitting right beside a really busy road near where I live and there's always big 18 wheelers and dump trucks and everything going up and down this road and they're using their Jake brake, which is just some kind of extra brake to help them brake as they come to, you know, they need to come to a quicker stop or they're coming down a hill or something. And it's very, very loud. So let's go ahead and play this, see what it sounds like without any of the other stuff on. So here we go. Life is full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you. Okay, now you could tell when it got around here, that's when a truck passed me for sure. I mean, everything else was really bad. There were trucks around and stuff, but the truck really went past me right there. That is going to be insanely difficult for this thing to get rid of, okay? And I've seen a lot of reviews so far on YouTube, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, dogging on anybody, but there's, you know, a lot of people are pulling in things that are really, really easy for a denoiser to get rid of, and they're just like, oh my God, listen to how amazing this is. And that's great. That's perfectly fine, because you may not be dealing with a crazy example like this. As a matter of fact, I would say most people aren't going to be dealing with an insane example like this. But just for those rare occasions, I wanted to throw one in here that was just crazy and show you that, you know what? It's still challenging no matter what denoiser you're using. It's going to be really hard to get rid of a crazy truck like that, because it was so loud compared to my voice. And uh, so let's just, let's start with, um, let's start with the default, okay? The default on the um, VX. So let's see what we can do. Life is full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. Oh, you know what might actually help if I turn the plug-in on? That might help, maybe. So let's give that a go again. Disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you. In All right, so you could probably hear right there. You could hear the truck coming into my voice, and it kind of made me sound like a robot because it's having a really hard time getting rid of that truck, you know, because that is that's a really hard thing to get rid of. All right. So let's just try broadband, too. Let's see what happens. It's full of disappointments, failures and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that. 
All right, this is just an extremely challenging scenario and example here. But as you can tell, it got rid of some of it. And I mean, a lot of it, it did get rid of a lot of it, but that's just really difficult. So, all right, let's just go ahead and let me pull up Pro. And now let's just see what we can do with Pro. Let's see if there's something that we can do to really try to work with these. So let's just do what we've been doing. And let's just go ahead and take this all the way, all the way up. And let's start with the low stuff and see what we hear. Okay, let's go here. Stop it. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you. In okay, all right. And it's on loop, so I'll just keep it playing. You. Life is full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. Okay. Okay, and now this is what really matters. You can you can single these bands out all you want, and you can do all this stuff, but what really matters is in context, how does it sound all together? So let's try this. Life is full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support Surround yourself with people who remind you that Surround yourself with people who remind you Surround yourself with people who remind you I mean, for what that is, that's pretty amazing. That is pretty dang amazing. All right, well, let's just try a different, uh, different broad. So broad two. Full of disappointments, failures, and setbacks. None of those things can permanently stop you. You have the power in you to overcome anything that life throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. So broad HF didn't work so well right there. Um, I did quite like broad too, but let's see how it does on that bit right there. Throws at you. There's nothing as powerful as a made-up mind. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter and support you in ways that matter the you know, Broad 2 actually did a pretty dang good job at this area. So let's do this again and let's have this play and we'll bounce back and forth between Broad 2 and Broad 1. So here we go. Let's just have this repeat. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. Surround yourself with people who remind you that you matter. Broad 2 did a better job at this point where the truck got extremely loud. So that's pretty awesome. All right. So that's that's pretty much it. I mean, these were my examples. They were all mono, by the way, because voice typically in most scenarios, you want the voice to be recorded in mono because, you know, once you send the voice over to an engineer and this is strictly more so like voiceover. But once you send the voice over to a mixing engineer, they're going to mix the voice with music and sound effects. And typically you want the, the voice going right down the middle and you want the sound effects and the music. You want that stuff to be panned left and right to be, you know, in stereo. And it helps the voice kind of just sit right down the middle. So that's all we did today. So we didn't talk about the stereo effect that this plugin allows you to, because there's a different, there's a, a few different features that allow you to change things and manipulate things in stereo. But these were just mono examples. And uh, this leads me to what I was going to say at the end regarding voice actors. Okay. So if you're not a voice actor and you don't care about this, you can go ahead and click off. That's fine. But voice actors, when I teach my classes and I get into denoising and when I start doing this kind of stuff, I always give the warning. I say, look, I'm going to show you guys how to use a denoiser just in case you find yourself in a bad scenario where you have to use it. But with voice acting, our audio, it, it we are under such 
such crazy magnifying glasses with our audio. It needs to sound as pristine as it possibly can compared to so many other things out there, like all the people I was talking to in this video, content creators. Because once the pandemic hit, we all moved into home studios and all of the clients out there expect our home studios to sound like a professional studio. So we're under the magnifying glass now. And we don't want to use a denoiser because a denoiser will never actually fix the problem. It's just a band-aid. The problem will always be there. It's either going to negatively affect the voice or you're going to be able to hear that noise in the background still. Even if it's subtle, you're sending your audio off to engineers who have really highly trained ears and are going to be able to hear all of these problems. You're not trying to um, impress the ears of your other voice actors or somebody else. You're trying to impress the ears of audio engineers and they know what this stuff sounds like. And if you can impress their ears, you're, you're covered across the board. And I always tell people, you want to physically fix a problem up front. You don't want it to be a band-aid. So if there is a noise in my space, I want to physically fix that before I even start recording. I don't want to use a denoise tool, which is just a band-aid, to try to fix something after I've recorded it because it will still be there and, and those engineers are going to hear it. So that's why I say this, this video isn't for you guys because now, now I will say this though, if you are a hobbyist and you're doing voiceover because you find it fun, you're not trying to compete with the top level voice actors out there, then by all means, buy a denoiser. If you don't feel like treating your space professionally or you don't feel like soundproofing it professionally, then you can use a denoiser and you can kind of get by here and there, but it will always be just subpar and it will always be a band-aid. But if you're just doing things for fun or if you're just doing VO and it's kind of like maybe you're doing lower tier audiobooks or something like that, then okay, you know, use a denoiser and and, and use it to the best of your ability to make it sound the best that you can. But I just, I wouldn't rely on stuff like this if you really want to compete with the top people in voiceover and you really want to make this a career that you can actually have pay you and not have to work a secondary job. If, if you want to be at the top, you've got to have all your stuff set up the right way up front instead of using something as a Band-Aid after the fact. Because trust me, audio engineers will know. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was useful. I hope this was helpful. If you did, please give me a like. Please uh, subscribe and maybe share this with your friends. That would be super helpful. Um, like I said earlier in the video, I am waiting on my Canon EOS R5C to come in the mail, which sounds like it might be mid April or hopefully mid-April, it might be later. So that's why I'm doing this kind of a video and it's just all um, audio basically. But eventually I'll get back to the normal videos. I just need my camera. Um, but anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will talk to you soon and everybody stay safe. Bye. Are you a voice actor? You want to learn Adobe Audition or Audacity? You can sign up for one of my live classes taught 100% virtually over Zoom, which means you can join from the comfort of your own home no matter where you are. And I record each class, and at the end of the night, I send you the recording of class so you can retake this course as many times as you want for the rest of your life. Or if you want to go through the course at your own pace, you can sign up for my on-demand version that you can find over at my website. Link in the description. The good news is, even though the classes cover DAWs like Adobe Audition or Audacity, they are so much more than DAW classes. I don't just cover everything you see on the screen right now. I also have one entire week dedicated to the most important part in making sure you have professional sounding audio. How to acoustically treat and soundproof the space that you're recording in, your home studio. Not only that, but I evaluate your audio and your home studio individually throughout all the weeks in class to make sure your home studio and your audio is just as competitive as the top bookers in the industry. So, if you're interested, you can find links in the description, and if you're not, well, you know what they say.